big visual effects day. Here. This is cool. It's a big visual effects day. This is our first whole count. You know, Act One's the, the Ghost in the Darkness. It's kind of a, a horror film. Act Two is the full-on, uh, in the daylight, knockdown, drag-out brawl between Hulk and all the hardware of the U.S. Army. He's about to say goodbye when he spots a soldier. The soldier makes a mistake, comes out, shows his rifle. They're here, and the army just invades, and it leads to the centerpiece action scene of the film. I've never done a kind of action movie type thing. I mean, I've never had, that's never been required. So when we were doing the speed running, for example, at ultra fast running, and it was really, really wear and tear. And I'm not, you know, I'm not young. So it really was, it was difficult. It was really difficult. Tim Roth was out there doing everything. Everywhere I turned around, he was on a wire doing things, running, and we had this speed run where we kind of dialed in where he was, had to run super fast. Three, two, one, action. I don't quite understand it. There were these cranes, there were these weights, and, and as the weights dropped, it pulled you across this part. I mean, I couldn't explain it, it was bizarre. Just as you're feeling that little pull, you gotta run, run with it. Just, just keep it just a little bit taut, just so it doesn't go. Yeah, like, you okay. don't try and outrun it, you let it build, and then okay. you kinda yeah. just keep it. You almost want to pretend that thing's I mean, I'm getting there. to there and I'm just going. Yeah. yeah I'm over, it's, it's too fast for me. It's too fast when for me. We it? need to pretend like I get really to that point. You, we need to pick them up, that's why. Yeah. So now it's all groovy. Now if I can't do it, it means that I just can't do it. <laughs> okay? And that it has to be stunty person. We had this little traveling system and a, and a harness and a weighted counterweight system, so we'd drop and he would just, it just sends him. He probably got running about 30, 40 miles an hour at one point. On top of that, you've got to act as well. So you can't just, I mean, the first time I did it, I was like, stay up, stay up, stay up. And you forget the cameras, aren't you? You've got to do the, the other job too. It takes him three hours to wake up. So there's like three hours of like problems or like change this, change that and everything. So then you can think about this part and remember the lines and now. What lines? <laughs> <laughs> Oi, I've got lines? <laughs> Copy that. Yeah, I look good from where I was. Yeah, nice. One's good, not yet! What's that? Look alive, this could get interesting. This is sequence 177 through 196. So what'll happen is we know story-wise, Bruce entered the building, swallowed the chip, drank the water, runs through the stacks, and then he's the art department's going to put the lovely set piece on top of this uh, overpass, and that'll be the glass uh, pedestrian walkway that he enters. The storyline asked for a raised glass walkway, and what we looked at, I just saw it one day, and it just actually hit me, the thing, we can use the infrastructure of this, of this beautiful Gothic walkway, but put ours on top of it and seamlessly build it within the structure. The pedestrian overpass in the university scene is, it's kind of a unique sequence. We essentially trap Banner in a glass tube and they fill it with gas to try and get him to, to uh, pass out. Put two canisters in there with him. Fire! <laughs> it fills up with smoke from the smoke grenades and it was a, a, a question of how fast will it fill up? And quite often smoke machines um, put out a lot of smoke, but they're not necessarily fast. And it was actually the director of photography, Peter Menzies, that su suggested, well, what about steam? And I said, well, steam won't work. But I said, actually, if we put steam through dry ice, it will. Which meant that the tunnel could fill up in literally five, six seconds. It's good, huh? Good for my skin. Yeah, it's good for my skin.
The first Hawkeye, we didn't see anything. Now we're gonna see little things. We want to see things that I loved in the TV show: the shirt cracking, the the boots exploding, the 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 the, the pants ripping, you know, and exploding at the base. And the Hulk, with all his might and rage, kicks his way. I mean, punches his way out of the tunnel, jumps, beautiful flight, lands, and everybody's like, "Oh my God!" That's really the first time we see the full Hulk when he jumps out of that, that overpass. The biggest challenge is really that, uh, you know, none of it actually happens. <laughs> so this is pretty much the background plate. We're going to layer in Hulk busting out of the tunnel here. So there'll be broken metal and flying glass and lots of debris flying out. Hulk will stand there and roar, and then he jumps down uh, and takes off into Morningside Park. Alpha team. Let him have all of it. I, I think the statue's unique in a way. I mean, it's always fun to watch the Hulk um, pick up a Humvee and beat the crap out of a statue and then use parts of it as a shield. That's unique. I don't see that a lot in the world myself. Blonsky, now you're up. Pa, pa, pa. One. Pick up the shield. Pa, pa. Two, pa. Ping. OK. Ka, ka. Three. Pa. Boom. That explodes. It was really, really important for me to do this at first because I really wanted to see Hulk fighting a regular sized man. Oh! The stunt guys were extraordinary, you know. They came up with all kinds of weird ideas. Yes, I'm okay. <laughs> I believe I can fly. Another rehearsal, right? Action! Don't try that in your home. Hulk had to leap up in the air, and he does a WWF move with the shield down onto the to the to the Humvee, and that was something we pre-visualized, and then we built a weight that was the, that was the same shape of the Humvee, and it worked. It worked great. It's like we, it's like we dressed it, you know? It looks just like it should, it's good. And the cable cutter survived underneath. One of the things that I think we're gonna be really proud of at the end of this movie is the exclamation point, which is the Apache crash. Where's the gunship? It's visually stunning. It's a great moment, character moment for Hulk to protect Betty. Helicopter opens fire, too many guns, full speed, 2,000 rounds a minute, both sides. He's hurting, he's hurting, but he takes it, he takes it, he takes it, he takes it. And then the helicopter is close enough, he turns around and he sees the helicopter and he's got one more shield with him. And he throws the shield at the helicopter. <laughs> slicing the, the rotor off and the helicopter comes crashing and, and the Hulk just curls up in, in a ball of, her, of, of, her, of Betty. Betty! This is one of our biggest events, especially in the university raid. This is an element that will go into our uh, Apache helicopter crash. We've got a series of pipes that blow up in succession to create the movement of the chopper itself. We've got debris on the floor, rep which represents the chopper, to chopper breaking apart. And then we'll add a computer-generated chassis that pops up in the air. The rotor mechanism will fly right over Hulk's head and hit the ground right into camera. So it's going to be a pretty cool shot. Nothing like napalm in the morning, you know what I mean? Well, I thought that wind actually gave us a nice yeah. definition. Yeah. 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 Some good stuff coming off the top. It was great. Uh, stellar success. Another, uh, another fine effects package from uh, Arthur and Laird on this movie. Fantastic. Good on him, yeah. In a way, that one, that one shot exemplifies a lot of things we're doing in the movie character-wise. And out of the flames rises Hulk. 
holding Betty and Betty's alive and Bros hasn't saved Betty, uh, Hulk has. Hulk is a hero now.